Hey guys, what's happening? I'm Jim, thanks for stopping by and I'm making this tutorial video series about Luminar AI. If you didn't see episode one, check that out there. That was the UI tour and kind of a getting started video. This is episode two and this one is about a quick start to get you editing. I suspect if you've got the app, you wanna get photos in there, you wanna start editing, you wanna start having fun and sharing your pics. That's what this video is all about. Now, as I showed in video one, I've got this demo files folder that I added to Luminar. You can easily add another folder with images or individual single images to edit by clicking on that plus button. And as you do so, folders will show up over here on the right and single image edits will show up in the single image edits folder that you see there. One small piece of advice, if I may, and I'll get into this in more depth in the catalog video that I'm gonna do as well, but I highly recommend that you get your folder structure set and organized however it is that you prefer to have your photos organized before you start adding them to Luminar because Luminar simply reflects the folder structure that your drive contains. So if you have an external drive or an internal hard drive with your photos in various folders organized, by whatever method you prefer to organize by, that's what's gonna be reflected here. Okay, so let's jump into the editing. I've got a photo here that I've selected. I wanna edit that photo. The general workflow idea with Luminar AI is to start in the catalog where you choose a photo, go to templates, which we'll go to next, which gives you AI-based suggestions for looks that you can apply to your photos, edit where you can customize the look of those templates and then export in order to share your finished product. Now you can also go from catalog straight to edit and skip over templates. It's your choice. You have full control over that. I am going to go to templates and when I click on that you'll see that a couple of different options come up under for this photo. Again that's the AI making suggestions for me. I like this big city lights street vibe pack and so I'm going to click on that and come through here and just click on a couple Street Theater looks pretty cool. Electric City is kind of overdone, but keep in mind you can adjust the opacity with this slider down at the bottom. So you can see as I drag this to the left, those colors are toning down. I'm gonna go ahead and put it back to 100. I don't wanna use that. This one looks really cool. I love my monochromes. City Thrills actually is the one I'm gonna use. I like that quite a bit. So there are some things I need to fix in the photo, including the fact that it's crooked and has spots in it. That's easy to do, and that's where you would go to the editing tab next. Now there's basically two options for you in terms of editing photos. You can, from the catalog, when you choose a photo, you can go to templates as I just did, or from catalog, you can skip over that and go straight to edit. I'm gonna go back to catalog, and I've got the photo here. I'm gonna say image, adjustments, revert to original, and that was a template example. I'm gonna go ahead and take the same photo and go straight to edit just to show you that you can. And now you'll see I'm in the Essentials tab. There's four tabs for editing, Essentials, Creative, Portrait, and Professional. I'm in the Essentials tab. The first thing I would do here is, of course, straighten the photo. I can click on that Perspective Fix and it automatically adjusts the straightening for me. I can also click here to adjust verticals and you can see it automatically straightens the building. I think that looks great. While I'm at it, I'm gonna go ahead and crop the photo because I prefer that to be a 16 by nine. And I'm gonna hit enter and my photo is all ready to edit. Next up, you could use the erase and I'm not gonna go through every one of these, but the erase allows you to come in here with the right bracket key. I'm gonna make that a little bit larger. I'm gonna click on a few of these spots and I'm gonna hit erase to get rid of them and they're gone. Now there's more spots in the upper left. Again, this is not a full tutorial on how I edit this photo. I just wanna get you quickly started. I recommend, especially if your photo has spots or is crooked, to start in this flow, Composition AI and then Erase. You set the base photo and then you're ready to edit. You've got the light tool, which allows you to really develop that base image. You can adjust contrast, you can adjust exposure, you can pull down highlights, pull up shadows, get the light looking the way you want. Enhance AI is super powerful and a fantastic tool. You've got lots of options here. Again, I won't fully edit this photo. Structure helps you apply some crunchiness to specific areas of the photo. Color, as the name implies, of course, gives you saturation and vibrance, as well as control over all of these various colors. You've got additional controls here, lots of capability, lots of power. What I recommend is you start on the Essentials tab, especially if you're new to Luminar, and you come through and sort of follow these in order. I think the flow and the organization of these tools on this tab is perfect. That's kind of the flow that I would follow anyway, so I think it makes perfect sense and that gives you a great starting point for editing an image. Now, I'm gonna pop over to the Creative tab with a different photo. Okay, here's an unedited photo, just the tops of some buildings in Brussels, which are 
honestly just beautiful. But creative, as the name implies, gives you a lot of creative tools to really significantly overhaul, change your photo, and maybe even turn it into an art piece. So the first one that is very popular is Sky AI. It is basically an automatic AI-driven sky replacement. So you might come in here and say, I really wanted to make that a sunset, and there you go. Now you've got a lot of a lot of controls here to adjust how that sky fits into your image as well as advanced settings to further refine that. I won't get into all of that, but it's very powerful. I highly recommend you spend some time experimenting with that. And also keep in mind, you can load a custom sky. So if you're new to Luminar, you may use these skies a lot in the beginning, but I think quickly you're going to want to maybe get some custom sky packs. There's a lot of great ones available, including my friend Matt Seuss has one. I'll put a link down below. There's some in the Skyloom Luminar marketplace. The point is consider taking photos of the sky yourself or getting additional packs so that you have some variety. I'm gonna go ahead and hit reset here, and I will come back and do a deep dive on all four of these tabs individually, so I'm not gonna cover everything, but again, it's a powerful bunch of tools here. Atmosphere AI, which is new, allows you to add fog, mist, haze, things like that. Sun rays lets you drop a sun into your image, adjust the rays and the intensity of them across the image. Dramatic mood, there's split toning. Matte gives you kind of some vintage looks. Mystical is a great way to add some moody drama to your photo. You can even add film grain. Lots of power, lots of flexibility. I'm now gonna get a portrait and give you a quick demo of the portrait tools. Okay, so here's a portrait and I've zoomed in in order to show how these tools work. Face light, as the name implies, will allow you to brighten the face of your subject in your portrait photos. You can also slim face if you would like to compress that look. You've got various controls over eyes, including changing the eye color, which you can do with one click. I just made those blue, but lots of power here for removing red eye or brightening the whites of the eyes, things like that. And down below, under the mouth controls, you can adjust the saturation, redness, things like that of the lips. Skin AI is very powerful, allows you to really smooth out the skin. And if there's any shine from lighting on your subject's face, you can remove that as well. Again, very powerful, wonderful tools that come in really handy. And I've zoomed back out. You've got a couple of controls here for shape. You can compress or expand the shape of the overall body. And then abdomen, as you see here, kind of pulls in the stomach area. I find that particularly useful on baggy shirts or baggy clothes, like in this person who's obviously very thin. You can pull in the look of that shirt where it might be puffing out a little bit. It's a great control and can come in really handy. And then, of course, there's high key, which, as you can see here, it gives you a really kind of washed out, almost bleached look that's very dramatic in certain portraits. And last but not least, the professional tab. You can start with optics. This has distortion correction as well as advanced settings on raw files where you can come in and do things like this. If your lens has created some distortion in the image, you can fix that with a couple of clicks or slider movements. You've got super contrast, which divides contrast into highlights, midtones, and shadows. Gives you a lot of control over the contrast in the image. And as you can see here, you can quickly have an impact. And something I like to note in my videos when I'm using contrast is it does impact how the colors look. So just doing some contrast and nothing else to this photo, took it from there to there where the colors are looking more vibrant and saturated. So just keep that in mind. Speaking of colors, Color Harmony, which I'll do a separate video about, has amazing tools. I'll go ahead and open all of these. This gives you incredible power and control over the colors all across your image. Brilliance and warmth, contrast in your colors, split color warmth, and one of my favorites, which is color balance, which allows you to adjust the color tones in the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights. This tool is well worth learning and experimenting with. Again, I will come back with videos about it in the future, but I recommend getting in there, moving the sliders around, and getting familiar because it is very powerful and useful. You've got Dodge and Burn, which gives you the ability to come in and apply darkening or lightening selectively with this brush anywhere in the photo and make adjustments to basically the light distribution. So perhaps I wanted to lighten this area over here. I could just come over and paint that in a little bit and you can see it's a little bit lighter. At the same time, if I wanted to darken something, I could come over here and darken the front of this building and maybe darken the reflection, which creates a little bit more contrast in the image and a little bit more pop overall. So if I turn this off, you can see that building and its reflection got darker and the building on the right got lighter. 
I recommend changing brush size and adjusting strength when you're using this tool and starting really low with strength. I usually start somewhere in the low teens, like a 12 or 15, and then just build upon my edits until I get to my final look. And last but not least is clone and stamp. And I did a video about both erase and clone and stamp, but it basically allows you to take pixels from one part of an image and paint them onto another part of the image in order to remove something that you don't want in the photo. I'll come back and do a more deep and detailed video about that, but it's a powerful tool and something that I think is well worth getting comfortable with. And last but not least is export, and this is what you would finish your photo with, assuming you've done editing to this photo. You have options to save to disk, send it via mail or messages, or upload to different photo sharing services. And by the way, some of these options may vary if you're on a PC versus a Mac. I don't know if there's OS differences or not. Just wanted to point that out. And for save to disk, you have the ability to come in here and rename it. I'm gonna call this Dublin Night. This is a night shot from Dublin. You can choose your location, including sticking it back in the folder that you initially are holding the base photo in, which means if that folder is in your catalog up here on this tab, the edited image will then be in your catalog as well. I'm just gonna leave it on desktop. You can make choices here based on sharpening, resizing if you want to, change your color space and your format as well as a quality slider, and then click save and you're done. And that's really it. That's hopefully a reasonably quick quick start for editing, basically taking you from picking a photo, a couple of different options, templates or edits, and a review of the various tools on the editing tab at a high level and export, which is, hey, I'm done, I'm ready to share. That's it for this video, that's episode two. So we've covered the UI kind of getting started and a quick start. We've got more videos coming up around the catalog, the various tools, things like that. I'll be back soon with episode three. Thanks for watching my friends, hope this is helpful and I'll see you really soon. You guys take care of yourselves out there and adios.